not seeing my videos in your subscription feed, make sure you've clicked the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of all my newest uploads. Hey, what's up, people? Pizzow here, and today I want to talk to you guys about Severin Films' upcoming Blu-ray release for 1976's Drive-In Massacre. You'll pay to get in, you'll pray to get out. Now, this is mostly going to be a review of this Blu-ray release, but I also want to talk about the movie, because up until just recently, Drive-In Massacre was on my list to do a File 13 review of. File 13 being the series of reviews I do for cult, sleaze, <laughs> exploitation movies so bad, they're good. But when I learned that this Blu-ray was coming out, I wanted to wait and get my hands on it and check it out and talk to you guys about the movie and about this release. Now, where to begin with Drive-In Massacre? Um, the movie's unique for uh, a couple of different respects. Number one, it was made in 1975, released in 1976. So it predates slasher movies like Friday the 13th and Halloween. It follows in the footsteps of the classic Texas Chainsaw Massacre in that it is 70s grindhouse very much to the core. Um, the movie's also interesting because it's written by B-movie legend George Buck Flower. He's the guy that was in just about every John Carpenter uh, movie up until like, I want to say like the late 90s. The The guy's a legend. Um, and Drive-In Massacre is also unique for the padding. This movie is 74 minutes long. And I'd say a good, at least, bare minimum 25 minutes of this movie is just padding. To stretch out that runtime so they can make it as close to feature length as possible, just a, 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 a scotch over the line to make it feature length. And they were like, okay, we're done. We're good. Now, even though this thing is padded to the nth degree, I'm talking very long dialogue laden shots that are very sparsely edited, which were done for budgetary reasons. And of course, to pad out this thing's runtime, um, the dialogue and the characters in the movie are still pretty fun and entertaining. Now, the movie is about a drive-in in California under siege by a sword-wielding maniac. And what I learned from this movie is that basically uh, people in the 70s who went to drive-in movies, they never went to watch the movie. They just went there to make out. And in the case of Driving Massacre, to make out and to get slaughtered by a sword-wielding maniac. And honestly, I can't think of another slasher movie where the killer's weapon of choice is a sword. But we've got some nice sword action in this movie, some beheadings, some stabbings. Um, they're hokey and cheesy, but they're fun. And Driving Massacre just overall is kind of a hokey, cheesy, sleazy, very much grindhouse, very much drive-in era kind of slasher movie. And it's got that kind of charm. I'm sure people who grew up in the 70s look back upon the drive-in era kind of like I look back upon uh, the VHS era in the video store era. So. Anybody who wants to be nostalgic about that time, about that era, Drive-In Massacre is definitely something that you should check out. If you're a fan of So Bad It's Good movies, Drive-In Massacre is definitely something you should probably check out. Yes, it's padded to the nth degree. There's actually a great sequence involving George Buckflower. It's total padding, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. It involves him in like a warehouse chasing around this young girl. He's wielding a machete and he just wants to cut the meanness out of her. 
but it's a lot of fun. And overall, Drive-In Massacre, like I said, it's a fun, cheesy, sleazy, 70s grindhouse, 70s drive-in era slasher movie. And it's a lot of fun. I've always really enjoyed it. Now, as for this Blu-ray, I have to say, Severin Films has done a phenomenal job with this transfer. I saw Drive-In Massacre on both VHS and on a crappy DVD in which it was part of uh, a bunch of other public domain titles, and it looked awful on both. What Severin Films was able to do with this movie, to clean it up, to brighten it up, is absolutely phenomenal. So kudos to Severin Films for this transfer. They, as a matter of fact, it is restored from the original camera negative recently discovered in the ruins of the Skyview Drive-In Movie Theater near Oxnard. I'm telling you, this transfer is night and day from the quality of the DVD and the VHS release, both of which I saw several times. This is a phenomenal transfer from the folks over at Severin Films. So let's talk about some of the extras that you get on this disc. First up, you have got a 16-minute featurette entitled Drive-In Days. It's an interview with star and co-writer John F. Goff. Uh, he discusses being bitten by the acting bug as a kid, working as a theater actor, and eventually working as a writer at The Hollywood Reporter before meeting Buck Flower, becoming friends with him, and he discusses how the two got together to write Drive-In Massacre. Uh, it all started with a case of beer, and a week later, Drive-In Massacre was born. Uh, Mr. Goff also discusses the rapid pace with, with which they shot the movie and how much fun they all had making the film. Uh, he discusses how it was such a um, exciting time to be working in non-union movies and uh, how it was sort of really guerrilla filmmaking at its finest. Uh, he also discusses working with Buck Flower on John Carpenter's uh, The Fog. He was the guy on the boat with Buck Flower when they went into the fog. Uh, uh, the original cut, um, they did not die, so they went back and had to do some reshoots. He talks about doing those reshoot, those reshoots, and um, yeah. So really nice conversation there with Mr. Goff, uh, about 16 minutes in length. Uh, next up, we've got Norm Sheridan recalls Drive-In Massacre. Just over 11 and a half minutes in length, Mr. Sheridan played the peeping Tom pervert. Uh, in the film. Uh, he discusses uh, how much fun he had on the film. Uh, he discusses the long talks he had with Buck Flower on acting and getting cast in Drive-In Massacre. A nice, kind of brief conversation with uh, Mr. Sheridan, but um, pretty entertaining nevertheless. Next up, we've got Making the Massacre, it's an interview with director Stu Siegel. It's about six and a half minutes in length. Mr. Siegel discusses getting into the film business first as a makeup person and then working on film sets before deciding to just go ahead and make his own movie. <laughs> he discusses how he had no idea. He'd worked as the makeup guy on one movie. He'd worked as like a grip on another movie. He'd worked as like a gaffer on, a, on another movie. And then he just decided, hey, I'm going to make my own movie. And, but then he didn't know anything about making movies. He didn't know how the sound was captured. He didn't know that there was actually film in the camera that the images were being captured on and what happened to the film afterwards. Uh, yeah. Uh, he discusses, um, uh, he discusses shooting Drive-In Massacre in four days, working 20 hour days to get it all in but he still says that it was the most fun movie he's ever done. Uh, he also discusses working in television as a producer on series like Hunter, Silk Stockings, and Renegade. A uh, brief interview with Mr. Siegel, but very informative and, and pretty darn entertaining. Uh, we get a theatrical trailer for the movie. Uh, we also get an audio commentary with director Stu Siegel in which he discusses, basically, he says they were making four movies at the same time. Um, how they did that, I have no idea. I guess when you make, when you made one movie <laughs> in four days, working 20 hour days, and then you jumped over to the next one, it just kind of felt like that. Or I don't know if they were in different stages of production on one while they were 
in later stages of production on the other. Um, but four movies pretty much at the same time. That's a lot of work. Uh, he discusses he discusses having to resort to long unedited shots because he just didn't have time uh, to do full coverage of everything. That's why there's so many long <laughs> unedited dialogue laden uh, sequences in the film. He also discusses how they had to pad out the movie because they barely had enough material for a feature length film thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, he discusses filmmaking in the 70s, film distribution from that era. Um, a pretty interesting and entertaining commentary with Mr. Uh, Siegel. It's moderated by someone. Um, Mr. Siegel talks pretty much throughout the entire thing. Lots, very informative, very entertaining. Uh, really nice commentary here. Uh, there's also an Easter egg on this disc. If you go to the theatrical trailer and, and move to the left, you'll get the trailer for... Uh, CB Hustlers, which was a movie that Stu Siegel also did, and it looks um, it looks pretty darn interesting. Um, if you are a fan of Drive-In Massacre, and I know this movie has a cult audience, you definitely want to look into getting this Blu-ray. As I said, the work that Severin Films did to restore this movie, to clean it up, there are shots in this movie that look truly, truly high def. Now there's, it's still rough around the edges here and there, but overall I was really blown away by the picture quality on this Blu-ray. Severin Films did a phenomenal job on this Blu-ray. Can't say enough good things about it. Got some nice new extras on this Blu-ray as well. If you've not seen Driving Massacre and you're a fan of 70s <laughs> sleazy grindhouse uh, drive-in era slasher movies and you don't mind a little padding, definitely look into picking up this Blu-ray of Driving Massacre from Severin Films. I'll put a link to Severin Films' website below. Also, I want to talk to you guys just briefly about this Blu-ray as well entitled uh, Return of Kung Fu. This is also from Severin films. And what this is, is 134 minutes of classic kung fu movie trailers from the golden age of martial arts movies. Those grindhouse, gritty, just chewed to pieces uh, trailers Awesome trailers. You guys know what those trailers from the 70s and early 80s were like for these kinds of films. Really entertaining. I did not watch the entire thing just yet. I watched a few of them. Highly entertaining. <laughs> a lot of fun. Definitely a hoot. If you're a fan of old school movie trailers, if you're a fan of kung fu movies from the 70s and early 80s, you definitely want to look into this as well. Also from the fine folks over at Severin Films. So yeah, if you've seen Drive-In Massacre, please let me know what you think of it in the comments section below. If you like this video, leave it a thumbs up. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. They're also right around here. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care and until next time, peace. Jeremy. Hello to the internet.